when you travel by train, either on the modern mainline or a heritage railway, the one person you're bound to meet is the train guard. The train guard is a person who is in charge of the train and does far more than just check the ticket. Back in the days of steam, guards were issued with satchels like this. Inside it, we have a pair of red and green flags. Red flag is for danger and green, as we often see at Foxville Railway, for go. Yep. Also has to have on his person a copy of the rule book. This is a copy of the British Railway rule book from 1950, but just a bit more up to date. Also got the current Foxfield rule book. Guards can only take trains on routes they have learned, and they keep this route knowledge in notebooks like this. This example, is from um, Wildsmith, working from Stoke-on-Trent, and it contains all the line speeds between Crewe and Euston, all the positions of the different signals and all the crossings. That was part of his route knowledge, so he could sign that route from Euston to Crewe and would know where he was in case of an emergency. In the days of steam, there were two types of guards. There was good guards and passenger guards. One responsible for passenger trains, one responsible for goods trains. And both of them would be similarly equipped, but they would also have to keep books like this, a guards journal. This is for a freight guard from the British Railways period. I would have to fill in the time of day, the weather, who was on duty, who was driving, the number of trips we're working, where you departed, where you terminated, the load of the train, and any delay to the train. The same for passenger guards. This is a passenger guards logbook, which describes the formation of the train, the number of carriages, the number of passengers on board, where there's a lavatory on board, number of passengers boarding, first or second class, the engine, if there's any assistant working, and the name of the staff actually on board the train as well. Guard would also need a copy of a working timetable and he would also need some safety equipment. Today a guard will have on his person a modern high-vis jacket and jackets like these were introduced in the 1960s. We'd also have in the days of steam an oil lamp like this and from the 1960s to the 1980s, a lamp like this called a Bardic lamp, which is battery operated and handily can clip onto the end of his satchel. If things do go wrong, the guard has to have on him a tin. This contains 12 detonators. These are exploding fog signals, which are put on the track several hundred meters behind a broken down train. And when the approaching train runs over them, they make a very loud bang in a warning to let the train know that there is something wrong ahead and that they should put the brakes on and they should stop. The guard also needs to be able to authorise movements if the train has broken down on the wrong line. So he would have in his satchel, these are called wrong line order forms, A, B, C and D, from the guard to the signalman from the guard to the driver, authorising that they can work a train going wrong road. In other words, it's running in the wrong direction for the track it is on. The guard also checks tickets, for which a guard would have on his person a set of ticket clippers, and would also have the job of opening and closing carriage doors. And they use something like this. This is called a T-key, this example from the 19th century from the London and North Western Railway. This is a privately purchased tea key. It's very nice. It falls flat in the pocket, the two handles folding up. So you can then put that in the carriage lock and turn it. And they'd also have, again, this is a London North Western carriage door key lock. So there's two means of locking the door. One of the most familiar jobs, even now on the mainline railway, is for the guard to let the driver of the train know it's safe for them to proceed, that the platform work has been finished, the doors are closed, everybody's on board, and they can take the train out. And to do this, he uses his green flag, and of course, 
his whistle. This example is made from bone, it's from the 19th century and it's from the North Staffordshire Railway. It's very loud and it has to be. Yeah. And that's before you put your, your cup of tea and your flask and your sandwiches. If you would like to find out more about the life of a railway guard, come down to the Foxwood Railway Museum. You can also volunteer and learn the skills of the trade to be a railway guard working the heritage trains here at the Foxfield Railway. And you can find out more online at foxfieldrailway.co.uk.